Hey guys, how's it going? In the last video, we talked about how to use uh, CSS selectors to uh, apply styles to HTML tags, classes, and IDs. In this video, we're gonna talk about pseudo classes, pseudo elements, and combinator selectors. Let's do this. So here's our style from the last uh, video. And uh, we have uh, the processed HTML with the styles applied on the right side here. Now what we want to do is talk about combinators. Um, combinators are really, really handy. So let's say that we like the idea of having margins for our headings. Uh, let's say for heading two, for example. Uh, but we don't want uh, headings to have margins on the bottom when they are part of an article. How would we do that? Now you could do something like article and then h2 and good to go. So if we were to refresh the page, now we have a block quote here and we have quote title, some quote. Let's say that we want to have, uh, we want to leave the, the margins alone in here, but we want to remove the bottom margin from heading to uh, as it lies, right? We could do margin bottom zero, right? If we refresh, you can see that the margins started to disappear. Not a whole lot of difference between the two. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, what we want to do here is actually not this. We want to use what's called a CSS selector combinator. And that's going to look like this. Uh, what this is going to do is it will only select H2 elements that are the immediate children of the article tag. So if we refresh the page, you'll see that quote title will be unaffected, right? It just, it added more space there. But now we want to remove the rest of this margin here. And the margins here are going to be determined by this image tag and this paragraph tag. So let's go ahead and remove that. But we want to keep the margins in these two paragraphs, but we want to remove the margin uh, before uh, before the paragraph tag, when it immediately follows an H2 tag, how would you do that? Let's say H2 plus P, margin top zero. Now what the plus does is it means uh, a sibling. So it's going to select any P tag that is immediately preceded by an H2 tag. Now if we refresh the page, less space, right? That it makes me really happy. I love I love CSS selectors. And technically, a space is a general combinator. So if you have like we showed above, if you did like uh, article h1, that's going to be that space is going to be a general combinator. So uh, any article that is any h1 that is a child of article is going to be. Um, selected by that uh, query selector. Um, you have your uh, child selector, you have your adjacent selector, and then you're also going to have your general sibling selector. So if we were to say P U L padding left is going to be two rem. And now you'll see that this one won't have any padding added to it, but this one will right? Or removed, I guess. So you could do five rem. You could also do something like text align center. Or even, even crazier, you could do text transform uppercase, right? Refresh the page. And now you can see we are uppercasing our, our text here. Uh, and that is a general sibling selector. So any uh, unordered list that has a sibling of P is going to receive this property, the CSS styling. That's cool, but what if you wanted to target the first uh, paragraph of the article tag? That's pretty simple too. We could say article, P, and then a colon to create a pseudo class or to select for a pseudo class. And we say first, of type. And now you can see if we say text transform, whoop, transform, uppercase, 
this first paragraph is now all uppercase. You could also do uh, font style italic. Um, you could also do nth of type. And you could say even. And now any even paragraph ta uh, that's, a, that's a child of the article tag is going to be italicized. There are many, many other uh, pseudo classes. We could say any uh, article where we're doing a selection and we could do uh, background color green. And now if we refresh and we select, you can see that uh, the P tag is going to be uh, changing the selection color to green. The rest of them are not going to have that green selection. How about this? The hover selector. So let's say that images have an opacity of zero. Or, or let's say 0.3, right? So it's going to be 60% uh, transparent or whatever. Now if we do image hover with the colon there, that's going to be a pseudo selector state, a pseudo class selector. And uh, let's say opacity equals one. And now if we refresh, you can see when we mouse over, the images are actually... Uh, becoming fully opaque rather than being 60% uh, transparent or, or whatever that difference is. I would be 70% transparent if I could do math. <laughs> That's a really, really useful one. Here's another interesting one. We have um, an article called CSS Selector, right? We have an ID called CSS Selector. So let's say article... Let's do this again. Opacity, 0.5. Article target, opacity, 1. Now if we refresh the page, the article has become half transparent. So what? how do we activate this? Well, we have our ID here of class selector. And the nice thing about the class selector is that it acts like an anchor. And so if you put a hash mark followed by the ID in your uh, URL and you hit enter, now you can see that it's fully opaque because it, that uh, element, the ID is in the URL. So that becomes the target of the URL. How awesome is that? There's so many cool things you can do with that. Pseudo classes are amazing. I love them. I love pseudo classes. Uh, but what about pseudo elements? Yes, pseudo elements are a thing. Uh, let's say that we want to make our block quote look a little bit nicer. Uh, let's say block quote. And let's give it a background color of light gray. Refresh the page, there we go. Let's add a little padding. Padding is on the inside of the element. Margins are on the outside of the element. Let's say padding is, uh, let's just say 10 pixels. And let's do zero 10. So this is gonna be the top and bottom. This is gonna be the left and right padding. But let's say block quote before. What does that do? What is before? Well, before is a pseudo element. Uh, so let's say content. Uh, a before or after element has to actually have a content property. And let's actually add um, one of these, a quote, right? And then let's say, uh, now what happens if we refresh here? You see we have a quote and it actually can't be selected. Uh, pseudo elements can't be interacted with. Let's set the parent to position relative. And let's set this to position absolute. And let's set the font size to, oh, let's say 8 rem. <laughs> That's going to be enormous. Yeah. 
And you know what? That's not my favorite uh, quote. All right. So when you have content, you can actually use um, Unicode character symbols like that. Now, if we refresh, we have a quote. Look at that. Now we have a, a, a little quote icon. And let's set the um, color, so the font color, uh, to light gray. I think we already have light gray. Yeah. Let's set it to gray. And now you can see that it's kind of hovering over these items. So let's do a Z index of negative one. And that might make it disappear. It does. We don't need a background color on that. And finally, let's do top zero, left zero. Let's do top negative 50 pixels. So you can see we can actually position this around um, and, you know, there's there's lots of things you can do with a uh, with a uh, blo uh, before element. You can add things like this. We could say instead of we could put it on the right instead of the left, um, and probably change this out to the opposite. Boom. Quote. Nifty, kinda. I don't know. Interesting. There's lots of cool things you can do with before and after elements. And of course, I forgot to add, you're supposed to dele delineate between a, a pseudo class and a pseudo element. Uh, pseudo elements have two colons, um, but most of the time the browser will know what you're trying to do. Now that's all awesome, right? But let's do this instead. Now let's do block quote P, uh, sorry, first letter. And then let's say display, uh, let's say font size, three rem. And then let's try doing a float left. There you go. Now you have a, a drop casing there. Interesting. <laughs> Wait, let's, let's try adding uh, some more uh, text to that. Yeah, look at that. Hell yeah. That's cool. So you can do that or you can do uh, something like uh, block quote P first line. You can say um, font weight bold refresh. There you go, now your first line is bold. There's a lot you can do with uh, pseudo elements and pseudo selectors, but I hope you, you start to see just how powerful CSS and HTML is. And you know, there's a lot that you can do with pseudo selectors uh, and with combinators that uh, give you so much flexibility when it comes to styling your websites. Um, and it doesn't have to just be websites. You can actually use uh, embedded SVGs uh, in your HTML and you can uh, attach styling to your SVGs. It gets really, really cool. Um, but I think that's going to do it for now. If you found this video useful, make sure that you hit that share button. Share this video with people that you know, because uh, you know what? I'm going to try and do a lot more of this from now on. I want to give a special shout out to my pal Sheldon Halcom, one of the top tier Singularity members over on Patreon. Uh, I, if it wasn't for my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members, I would not be able to dedicate as much time as I do to the channel. So if you believe in the direction I'm heading, make sure you head over to Patreon and consider supporting the show or maybe support the show here on YouTube. It, it makes a huge difference. Um, that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had a blast. I hope you learned something new. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.